Welcome to module number five. Uh, in this module, we will look into aspects of best practice when it comes to applying the Prince to plans practice. So this would cover learning outcome number three, understand how to apply and tailor relevant aspects of Prince to practices in context. So what is it that we're gonna cover as a part of this particular module? Uh, we shall be uh, covering the following components as a part of this particular module. Uh, we will look into application of Prince2 plans practice, and we will try to demonstrate an understanding of some of the relevant products required to support the plans practice. And there are three relevant products. One is the plans product, that is the project product description, and then the work package description. These are the relevant mm -hmm. uh, management products. And then we will look into areas of focus for key roles associated with the plans practice. And we will look into some associated uh, techniques pertaining to this practice. And we will finally analyze whether an approach to applying the plans practice is effective and fit for purpose. And let's uh, action and we'll take into consideration the principles, effective management and associated techniques of the practice and tailoring to projects uh, environment and context. Uh, a bit about the management products. Uh, one of the management products relevant to this particular practice is plans uh, uh, product. Now, when we talk about plans, we are referring to a project plan or a stage plan or a team plan. The purpose of this document is to provide a proposal that outlines the what, where, when, how, and by whom the project as a whole or a subset of its activities will be performed. When approved, a plan provides a baseline against which progress can be measured and issues assessed. So what are the content that would go into a plan? The plan would contain a scope, which provides a description of the plan scope, and it would include a section on dependencies, external products or activities on which the plan depends, and then planning assumptions and prerequisites uh, would be another key component, uh, assumptions on which the plan is based and any fundamental aspects that must be established or remain in place for the plan to succeed. And we also kind of include lessons, incorporating details of relevant lessons from uh, similar projects in the past, uh, which have been reviewed and accommodated uh, with this particular plan. Further, the plan document would contain what are the products to be delivered, it includes a product breakdown structure, flow diagram, and the product descriptions that fall within the scope of the plan. What is the work to be performed? There would be a section of that in the plan. The work in the scope of the plan shown by way of a work breakdown structure and the associated work package description. Budget, the cost of the project, including the risk budget and the change budget. Uh, there would be a schedule of uh, representation of the various project stages and activities along with durations and sequence, such as a Gantt chart. It would include a schedule, a representation of the project stages and activities, their durations and sequence, such as a Gantt chart. There would be a section on target, targets and tolerances, uh, which provide a permissible deviation for scope, cost, and time at the uh, level of the uh, plan. Uh, stage plans and team plans may also include sustainability and risk tolerances. And there would be a section on monitoring, controlling, and reporting arrangements, providing a description of how the project will be monitored and controlled, and of reporting procedures and responsibilities. So this is one uh, management product. The other one is a project product description. Now, a project product description, its purpose is to uh, describe the project's major products and intended purpose, including the user's quality expectations and the acceptance criteria and acceptance method for the project. It is created in the process of starting up a project and refined during the process of initiating a project. And some of the contents would be, uh, it would be, there would be, be a purpose statement describing uh, what the uh, products, uh, project product will fulfill and who will use them. And what are the major products? A description of the major products to be delivered would go into the project product description. Uh, derivation in terms of what the products are based on, such as existing products, 
or a requirement for a new capability. There's another section of the project product description. The user's quality expectations would go into the PPD document describing the quality expected of the project products and the standards and procedures that will be needed to be applied to achieve them. Acceptance criteria, uh, prioritizing list of criteria that the project products must meet uh, to be accepted by the user. There would be a section on acceptance methods and responsibilities, the means by which acceptance will be confirmed and who will be responsible for the acceptance decisions. There would be a section on project level quality tolerances. Uh, any tolerances that apply to the acceptance criteria would kind of go into the project product description. So we looked into a plan document and its content. We looked into a project product description and its content. And now let's kind of look into a work package description and the content. Now this particular document's purpose is uh, to describe how one or more products will be produced and delivered. It is used to pass responsibility for work formally to the team manager or team member. The contents would be description of work to be done, a statement of work and associated work breakdown structure, team manager or person authorized, the name of the team manager or the individual responsible for the work package would go into this document. Product descriptions associated with the work package would go into uh, a work package description. What are the relevant techniques and procedures, uh, requirements for how the work is going to be done? What are the change control requirements in terms of the arrangements for control of the project and project baselines uh, that fall within scope uh, of the work package. Any limitations, restrictions or limitations on the work such as authorized work hours, safety and security measures. Monitoring, controlling and reporting descriptions of how the work package will be monitored. Targets and tolerances, which kind of document the permissible deviation for scope, cost and time for the work package. References applicable in terms of, uh, you know, any higher level plans that need to be uh, uh, referred to. Approvals, who would approve the completed project and agreements, uh, a record of the initial authorization and final completion of the work package between the project manager and the team manager. So these are the three key uh, associated documents.